Hello, this is Bazer here, and today we are doing another script tutorial. Today we are going to be learning how to use events, conditions, and effects, and also how to use the script documentation. To start, we are going to need to know how to use events. Events are pretty much actions that happen in game, such as breaking a block, jumping, joining, or leaving. For this example, we are going to be using the onbreak event. The onbreak event will essentially fire the code under it whenever a player breaks a block. We can use this event by starting our code with onbreak and then ending that with a colon. Then we can press enter and then press tab. This will indent the line so all the code under the onbreak event will run. The next thing we're going to learn is conditions. So conditions are essentially criteria for code to run. So we can use a condition such as has permission um, in an if statement. So we can actually check if a player has or does not have a permission. So we can start this out by using if the player does not have the permission. Then we can put in quotes and then we can put whatever permission we want. So block dot break. I'm going to be using this for this example, and then we can add a colon, because this is a if statement. And then we can press enter, and then press tab to indent the line. Everything under this if statement will run. The next thing we're going to learn about is effects. Effects are things that we can make scripts do, such as push a player, cancel an event, or send a message. For this example, we are going to be using the cancel event effect. We can easily cancel an event by typing cancel event. Now what this will do is if the player does not have the permission block.break, it will can completely cancel out the breaking. So the player will not be able to break the block. Under this cancel event, we can actually do a little bit more. So we can tell the player that they cannot break blocks. We can start off by typing send, and then we put quotes, and we can say, and C for red, you cannot break blocks. And then this will work. This line is completely valid, but I recommend using two and then player. If you get into the habit of that, it's a lot easier to remember in functions to send it to a variable. If you've been following along, congratulations because this is your first ever script. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Minehut to host my server, but pretty much after you install the script plugin, you can go into the scripts folder, go into scripts, and then you can go create a new file. Then you can call this whatever you want, I'm going to call it test.sk, and then press create. Now we can go into this file and paste our code inside, and then just press save. Now once you are on your server, you can run the command slash sk reload and then the file name. You don't have to write .sk, you can just write the name of the file, which is, in my case, test. After you reload it, you can try breaking a block. I need to remove my permissions, so I just uh, removed my operator status. Now if I try to break a block, it cancels the event so I cannot break the block and it tells me that you cannot break blocks. Now because I just made myself a operator now, I should have the permission to break blocks. So now, as you can see, I can break blocks. The last part of this tutorial is the script documentation. There are websites such as SKUnity um, or ScriptHub that have events, conditions, effects and expressions, all that you need for your scripting. You can easily look something up. So let's say I want to know how to detect when a player joins. So I can look up join. Then we can see the first event is on join. And we can also look at examples. So we can look at the community examples. So. For this example, when a player joins, it says, Welcome to the awesome server. I mean, yeah, isn't that great? Um, yeah, so you can use the documentation to 
look up and find all these different events. That's the end of the tutorial. The next tutorial will be on basic commands.